Many of you are perhaps in the same boat that I was. You've seen your fair share of Power BI Q&A demos, but you can't make up your mind whether it's something useful or just eye candy. For me, the changing part came after watching Adam Wilson's excellent session at the FAST uh, Business Analytics Conference on Q&A. Since then, we have gone on to deploy a Q&A model, and here I am to share the lessons learned from other experts and my own experience. So it all starts with the Power Pivot model. That's at the heart of it. That's what powers all of it. Now, our complete BI model uh, is an SSAS tabular and has over 500 tables. Now, clearly not something you would want to start, not to mention that Power BI doesn't quite support SSAS tabular. So what we did was we focused on one subject area and created a workbook for it. What you see here is a redacted version of the production workbook and the data has been randomized. So how would Q&A work with Power BI? Is it a free for all? Can any user just upload their workbook on Power BI and have it available for Q&A? As it turns out, that is not the best approach to support Q&A. So the rule one is only have one Q&A workbook per subject area. And people can, of course, upload multiple workbooks if they like and use them as they wish. But just make sure that only one is turned on for Q&A or added to Q&A for such a area. Rule two is that you eat your own dog food. So after you have uploaded your workbook to Power BI, and as it often happens, somebody comes to you with an ad hoc request, don't go to an Excel pivot or Power BI or anything else to, to uh, try to respond to their questions. Instead, come to Power BI Q&A and try to answer the question. So let's say in this case, somebody asked me about the revenue of Canada. So I'm just gonna type that in. And let's say they also want some more detail. And there I have it. So it's really quick. And the best part is now you can easily share this with the requester. So you can email it to them or you can copy the URL and send it to them over IM. And once they open the URL, they're going to see exactly what you were seeing. But what's great is now they can perhaps ask additional questions. So they see this and oh, maybe this is not exactly what I wanted, right? Or maybe I need more detail and, and maybe I need to see a trend. So this is a great way to get your users along, to take them along on a journey, right? Start them with something simple, so you spoon feed them, but then as they get more and more comfortable with Q&A, hey, who knows, they may even stop asking questions. Rule three, leverage cloud model. Now this is by far one of the best features that's been recently been released in Power BI. Let me show you how it works. All right, let me go back to my site. And once I'm back to my site, if I go to this wheel icon and I choose Power BI settings, and here I'm gonna click on the Q&A tab. Now if you have multiple Q&A workbooks, all of them will appear here. You can just click on them and say optimize for Q&A. Now it opens up this pane on the side and I'll talk about the option. But what's great is right next to it, is the Q&A form. So you can tweak things and check the result in real time. So the first one overview just give you, gives you some summary information. The second tab shows you synonyms. So in this case, let's look at geography and you can see uh, I have a column called country name, but it's possible that uh, that might not work. So let me see FY2014. by country and you can see by how the country word is is slightly grayed out what that's indicating is that q a didn't understand that term so we need to fix that because this is a common question that people might ask so i can just go in here and i say hey, country name country is just another synonym for this column name and i can click save and this saves the changes to the workbook and what's interesting is that 
Synonym functionality is also available in the Power View window. So if you go to the Advanced tab and click Synonyms, you essentially have the same functionality as you saw in Cloud Modeling, but hey, it's a lot more fun to do it here in the cloud. So now that I've added that synonym, now if I ask the same question, I get that in a beautiful map. I'm going to come back to phrasings. Let's skip to usage. Now this is really cool. You can see all the users who are using uh, this, this report for Q&A, and you can click on a user to see exactly the questions that they're asking. Plus, you can click on something and see the results that they're getting as well. Really cool. But what's better is that um, you know we have this concept of flagged questions. So let me show you how that works. So imagine uh, you're at the Q&A, just an end user, and you ask some question. Say sales by product. And you notice the product gets grayed out and you don't get the information you're looking for. In that case, the end users can click this flag to flag the result of this question as not helpful. And the modeler or whoever is maintaining the report can go back and check these flagged questions. They can see what's not working and, and tweak the model using synonyms or actually changing the underlying model itself uh, to make sure that these things uh, work as the users expect. Now, sometimes you can get into scenarios where um, you would need to use phrasing. It's, it's somewhat of an advanced feature. If you want to learn more about phrasing, just go to Overview and click on this link. So let me share some other useful tips with you. Let's start with the model. Uh, first of all, try to make sure that your table names, column names are as friendly as possible. And also try to avoid using abbreviations. All of this would minimize the amount of tweaking you would have to do later on with your Q&A model. As for your site, uh, make sure you add some featured questions. Doing so is pretty easy. Just click on this type in the question and there are lots of settings that you can choose from. Now how this helps is that this gives a starting point for new users. This gives them an idea about what kind of questions they can ask and they go from there. So as you can see, uh, you can choose the size, you can choose the icon, the color, you can use a custom background, you can upload an image for that. So it's pretty cool and all the user has to do is just click on it and the result gets loaded for them. Going back to the model, one thing that helps is kind of a cleaner relationship. The closer you can get to a star schema, um, essentially, which is kind of a you know a, a, a fact table here and dimensions here, uh, the better the Q and A is going to perform. One thing about numerical columns, which are not to be treated as numbers, as typically happens in date tables, for example, the year. The default behavior in Power View and Q and A is to add these things up, but clearly here shouldn't be added up. So you can change that by going to the advanced tab and clicking summarize by and make sure you check do not summarize. So do this for any numerical columns, it should not be aggregated. Also hide any columns that are not relevant. In fact, even consider deleting them if they aren't needed at all. Uh, this would reduce a clutter and would improve performance. And lastly, as users are writing their queries, and in case you have multiple models, which you typically would have, in this case there's only one, but uh, as they're typing different phrases, the Q&A may bounce back and forth across different workbooks. So one tip I share with my users is they can pin the workbook that they're interested in, and that way anything they ask be focused on that workbook. So if they know the subject area that they want to focus on, just pin that workbook and ask away. So I would say Q&A has proved really useful for us. So do not discount it before you give it a fair try and hopefully the guidelines provided here will help you along that path.